Okay, we're going to do a couple more problems. Uh, I think there's seven or eight more left uh, in the practice packet. So now what we're going to do is apply this idea of the mole uh, and dimensional analysis and start solving problems um, that require multiple steps. So we have a couple of conversions here. One dozen apples equals two bushels, 0.2 bushels. So we can write one dozen, and I'm going to write apples per 0.2 bushels. Um, we have one dozen apples is two kilograms, so I can say one dozen apples, two kilograms. And now what we want to know is what's the mass of 0.85 bushels. So we're going to start with our number and our unit, and then we're just going to use dimensional analysis. So I need bushels in the denominator. So I look at my conversions and I see right here I have 0.2 bushels is one dozen apples. So that means bushels cancels. And now I want dozen in the denominator. And as you can see, I've got one dozen is two kilograms. So I'm going to say one dozen is two kilograms, dozen cancels. And since I'm looking for mass, the unit kilogram is mass. So if I do the math there, 0.85 divided by 0.2 times 2, I get 8. 0.5 kilograms, and that, that answer should make sense. Um, a little over three quarters of a bushel of apples weighs about eight and a half kilograms. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Um, we have one apple has eight seeds, so again, I can write a conversion. One apple has eight seeds. And I want to know how many seeds there are in 14 kilograms. So I'm going to start with my number and unit. Uh, and I'm just going to write kilograms there knowing that I have my apples. So I know I need kilograms in the denominator. So, and the problem doesn't say this, but you can use your information from the previous problem and say that two kilograms of apples is one dozen. So now our kilograms cancel we want dozen in the denominator. We know that one dozen is 12 apples, so dozen cancels. And we want to put apples in the denominator because we want it to cancel. And we know that one apple contains eight. So one apple contains eight seeds. So again, this dimensional analysis technique makes sure that as long as you're using the same units and you're canceling, the unit that you end up with is going to be your answer. So let's do the math. 14 divided by 2 times 12 times 8, and that's going to give us 672 seeds. And that should make sense. 14 kilograms of apples, um, 672 seeds. All right, let's move on. Um, we're going to go back to the idea of moles and molecules. So let's start with the number, 3.4 times 10 to the 12, the unit, molecules. And I'm just going to write molecules. I'm going to leave out the water. So we want molecules in the denominator, and we're converting to moles. So we want that in the numerator, and I'll put moles of water. And again, one mole is the equivalent of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, whatever we're talking about, and in this case it's molecules. So there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. So molecules cancel, so when we do the math, the unit left over is the one we want. So 3.4 times 10 to the 12th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives us 5.6 times 10 to the negative 12th, um, and that's moles. And that should make sense. We're, we're, we're dividing 10 times 
10 to the 12th divided by 10 to the 23rd, so we're going to expect to have a small number. Okay, let's move on. We've got four more problems here. And again, we're going to combine the idea of moles um, and some dimensional analysis stuff. All right, so how many atoms are there in 5.5 moles of dinitrogen trioxide? So you should be familiar with your um, writing formulas for covalent compounds, dinitrogen, two nitrogens, trioxide, three oxygens. So two nitrogens, three oxygens. All right, so we have 5.5 moles. My handwriting is not the greatest with this thing yet. Dinitrogen trioxide, so we want moles in the denominator, and we want molecules, whoops, yep, we want molecules of dinitrogen trioxide in the numerator. The reason we want molecules, even though the question is asking for atoms, that is a molecule, since it contains more than one element, that's a molecule. So one mole of that contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So now to get to atoms, we need to get rid of molecules. So what we're going to say is molecule, sorry, the handwriting is terrible. So now if we look at this, we have two nitrogens and three oxygens. So there's a total of five atoms in this molecule. So we're going to say there's five atoms in one molecule of N2O3. That way our moles cancel, our molecules cancel, and we have atoms as our last unit. This is the step that people usually, whoops, People usually forget in this problem. So let's do the math. 5.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 5. And that gives us 1.65 times 10 um, to the 25th. And again, the unit is atoms. All right. So let's incorporate grams into this. So now, if we have one mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams, what we can say is one mole of carbon is equivalent to 12 grams of carbon. So we can solve the problem from there. So let's start with the given. 3.2 moles of carbon. And we're trying to convert to grams of carbon. So one mole of carbon contains 12 grams of carbon, so we'll put that in the numerator. Do our cancellation, 3.2 times 12 gives us 38.4 grams of carbon. All right, same idea in the next problem. Uh, there are 24 grams of magnesium for every mole of magnesium. So, let's start with the given, 4.5 times 10 to the 30th atoms of magnesium. And that makes sense because magnesium is an atom, it's not a molecule. So now we want atoms of magnesium in the denominator. Now we have the conversion from moles to grams, and we're trying to find um, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find mass, which is grams. So if we go from atoms, whoops, to moles, then we can go moles to grams. And some people do problems this way. They'll do all of the conversions first, and then they'll go and put in the numbers. So one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then one mole is 24 grams, and that's from that conversion. So we have 4.5 times 10 to the 30th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 24, and we get a fairly large number. So let's see, we have 1.8 times 10 to the what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the 8th. Okay. Um, 
We're going to save this problem for later because that takes a little bit too much time. All right, um, let's do this one here. So we have 3.4 times 10 to the 34th, 34th atoms. And we want to get to moles. So we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. So let's uh, do the math. 3.4 times 10 to the 34th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we get my calculator is not giving me numbers in scientific notation right now. 5.6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to the 10th. Um, now that number seems pretty large for moles, but if you notice, um, 10 to the 34th is a, is a really large number. All right, so let's go through the last ones really quickly uh, to save some time here. I'm not going to talk much. I'm just going to do the math. So we have 3.4 times 10 to the 34th molecules of nitrogen. Now, since we're talking about molecules, it's now N2, where up here it was atoms, so it was just N. All right, so same idea, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules uh, in one mole of the molecule N2, and you're going to get your same value that we got in the previous problem. Same thing with down here. We're talking about moles of oxygen, um, how many atoms versus molecules. So the idea here is we have 5.6 moles of oxygen atoms versus 5.6 moles of oxygen molecules. Notice atom of oxygen versus molecule of oxygen. So both of these you're simply going to go one mole 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, whoops, this one's going to be atoms. The one down here would be molecules. Okay, I ripped through those pretty quickly, um, and the reason for that is we've done these problems in class, and this is just uh, for review. So if you're still having trouble with this, you need to bring this up, uh, ask some questions in class, or just bring it to my attention. Um, if you want me to go through a couple of these slower, um, just let me know. Uh, either send me an email or let me know in class. And that is that.